Hey guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. What we are going to do in this video is take a look at five of my top energy stocks or top of my, my five top energy positions. Now, uh, people sometimes ask me, how do you know when to buy stock or when to sell stock? The uh, most simple answer to that question is when the, the, the demand is far greater than the supply, you can buy the stock. And if the uh, supply is far greater than demand, then you should sell the stock. And then uh, the next question would be the demand of what? Now, obviously, that could be the, the uh, commodity like uh, oil, gas, energy, etc. Or otherwise, it could be a commodity like uh, lithium or something like that. Uranium is an example that comes to mind because uh, these are sort of top of the mind recall in terms of um, demand and supply curves that are kind of a little bit out of whack. Um, but in, some, in the most simple terms, uh, that would be the answer to the question. And then uh, a follow-up question might be, uh, if a stock is very thinly traded, in other words, it might even be an over-the-counter stock or a penny stock, if there's a lot of demand for that stock for a particular reason, then it might be a good time to buy some of it. An example of that would be Colonial Coal, uh, where they have about 178 million shares outstanding in the marketplace today. And uh, the company effectively and its assets are up for sale. That's metallurgical coal. So that would be an example of, of something like that. But I don't want to bore you too much with that type of details. I really want to simplify it. And that's why I said when the demand is far greater than the supply, then it probably is a good time for you to buy. Sometimes uh, it could be uh, a different reason in terms of the volume of the stock, but we'll take a, a look at that one at the end of this video because the last one I'm going to talk about is Occidental Petroleum. Uh, but anyway, these are five of my largest positions in energy. It's not the five largest because I actually have one position that is outsized and even larger than these, and that is XLE, which is an ETF. And uh, that ETF is about 20% um, Exxon and 20% Chevron. But I'm not going to talk about that ETF today. I'm talking about five equities that I hold directly in my portfolio. I also have some others like Thermal Coal, Alliance Resource uh, Limited Partners, and Blackstone Minerals. Uh, but those are not part of this discussion. I am only talking about my five largest energy direct holdings. And I'm going to try and explain to you why I have them in my portfolio and why I'm long in these particular positions. So let's do a quick comparison here. I'm using bar charts to do the uh, comparison. This is some price information. I'm going to ignore that right now because I don't really care if the market is going up and down or what it's doing. Uh, part of the question in terms of when to buy and when to sell also relates to diversification. Um, some people are very strong pro proponents of diversification and other people say it's not really necessary if you choose three or five um, large stocks like uh, some of the uh, most famous traders we know sometimes do. Um, perhaps an example of that would be someone like Bill Ackman. Uh, Warren Buffett has most of his assets in just a few stocks, although he holds many, many different equities. Um, but uh, a secondary part to that diversification is diversification within a particular, particular industry. So uh, what I mean by that is you can diversify by holding, for example, energy stocks, financial stocks, um, you can have uh, pharma stocks, technology stocks, et cetera, that's diversification. But within the energy sector itself, you can have diversification as well. So let's look at these five and just for the sake of simplicity, I have kept the um, sequence alphabetical. So we're going Devon, Enbridge, Energy Transfer, Petrobras, and Occidental Petroleum. So what makes these companies different? So a couple of little things. So firstly, if we look at Devon, it's an oil US exploration and product company. Enbridge is an oil production and pipeline company. Energy Transfer is an oil gas production pipeline master limited partnership. Petrobras is an emerging markets integrated company and Occidental Petroleum is a US oil integrated company. Another couple of differences here is that energy transfer, as I mentioned, is a limited partnership and Petrobras is an ADR, which is an American depository receipt because this company trades on the American stock exchange as an ADR. I cannot hold the uh, equity directly. I actually hold Petrobras uh, preferreds at PBR.A, but I'm using PBR just for the sake of example here. Um, Many people have asked me why Devon has crashed over the last six months or so. The primary reason for that is the fact that um, right now, the uh, cost of um, natural gas in the marketplace in terms of the spot price is less than the cost of production. So uh, if you're a major gas, natural gas producer, 
Um, right now, it's not a good time to be in that particular commodity. I like real assets, so I like commodities like uh, oil and natural gas, etc. cetera. Uh, but the uh, cost of production currently exceeds the cost of the actual product in terms of its spot price. That's one of the reasons why Denim has taken such a hit. So let's look at this. These are the technicals uh, for the uh, technical guys among us. And the one I want to focus on here is the stochastic. This kind of ties in with the comment that I made at the start when the uh, demand exceeds the supply. You can also sort of use the 20-day uh, raw stochastic score as an indicator of that. And if you, in case you can't remember what it is, I added a little line here at the top. If it's above 80, in other words, 80%, it's trading near the top of its high-low range, or you could say it's overbought. And if it's below 20, it's trading near the bottom of its high-low range, which means it might be oversold. Now, you cannot use one indicator on its own, but it's certainly a worthwhile indicator to look at. So in this particular example here, you can see that Devon of late is certainly overbought with a 20-day raw stochastic score of over 90. That's why I put a red arrow next to it. On the other side or the, uh, the flip side of the coin is Petrobras with a 20-day raw stochastic score of only 15. The other ones I put under an amber, so I'm sticking here with my uh, traffic light. So green is go and red is stop, and amber is maybe, you know, so uh, here we have uh, Enbridge and energy transfer and Occidental Petroleum with uh, a stochastic score that's edging up into the 70s. So they're getting very close to being overbought. Now, of course, Oxy is a bit of an outlier there because the only person who's buying Oxy hand over fist is Warren Buffett. Uh, I'm not particularly sure why, but it's okay because as long as he keeps buying, he keeps pushing up the price of my existing equity position, which I am long in with my cost basis around $10 versus his cost base basis of around $60. I prefer my Occidental shareholding to his, even though his is much larger than mine. The ratios at the bottom here are indicative as well, so you can use it as a second benchmark. Uh, it's nice to see a uh, price earnings ratio below 10. We have Devon at eight and a half. We have Petrobras at only 3.5. Petrobras remains the uh, least expensive super major you can buy, but it comes with lots and lots of risk. The other ones are okay. Of uh, the other three, uh, energy transfer is best positioned with a uh, price earnings ratio of uh, only 12 and a half. The industry is currently sitting at around 16, 17. So those give you a couple of indicators. So uh, you have some conflicting signals here. Uh, on Petrobras, you have uh, green, green. And on Devon, you have red, green. So uh, these are things that you need to take into uh, consideration and maybe dive a little bit deeper before you actually pull the trigger and make a buy. From a performance point of view, you would have been dissatisfied if you held Petrobras long. I do, so I have. Uh, and the reason for this uh, sharp decline over the last month is the fact that they said they were going to cut their dividend. Now, ironically, the dividend is still greater than most um, of the other energy companies that pay a dividend. So it's not that bad, but it certainly uh, caused the uh, stock price to take a hit. But on the other hand, if you uh, were long in uh, Enbridge and energy transfer over the last six months or so, you probably uh, feel okay. Uh, Enbridge has a, an annual dividend yield of around 7%, and over the last six months, it's up about 6%. So uh, it's not a bad picture, even though uh, Enbridge is way off its 52-week uh, high. And then uh, Energy Transfer has been very kind to us. Uh, previously, I made a video just a couple of uh, weeks ago talking about the 4% rule. And uh, uh, this is obviously an indic indicator of how much retirees should be drawing from their accounts when they stop working and they're living off their retirement savings. The 4% rule, right? Um, Bulldogs number one answered and said uh, he prefers the... Uh, the 8% rule, which is energy transfer. You put a million dollars into energy transfer and you draw a salary of $80,000 per year and everything's good. And then of course you get the benefit of the potential uptick in the stock price as well. Uh, energy transfer has been good to us. Key statistics, these are kind of interesting numbers to look at as well, just to give you a different benchmark. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm comparing the uh, annual sales of the company. So I'm looking here, for instance, on the far left at Devon, annual sales are about 15.2 billion with a market cap of about $30 billion. So uh, if you compare the two, you'll see, obviously this is easy math because uh, 31 is sort of two times 15. So it's trading at a two times multiple there. If I use that as a, as a quick qualifier in terms of quantifying the Delta between annual sales to market cap, right? So I'm taking the market capitalization or market valuation, which is the number of shares outstanding multiplied by the current stock price. And I'm dividing it by its annual sales. 
So the answer for Devon is two. The answer for Enbridge is two. And the answer for Occidental is two. So that's pretty normal. It's uh, reasonably standard in terms of uh, market valuation, in terms of how the market values a particular company, sort of a two times multiple. As a general rule, companies that have recurring revenue, like contracted revenue, uh, perform much better than companies that have one-time revenue or, or companies that are reliant on a particular commodity to drive their revenue. A two times multiple is fairly normal when you're comparing the market cap of the company with sales. But here are the two outliers, right? So based on the same math, energy transfer at Petrobras look to be significantly cheaper. And in fact, energy transfer is a pretty good buy if you use this as a, as a benchmark. It's generating annual sales of $78.5 billion dollars and it has a market cap of only $52 billion, which means its sales is far, far greater than the entire company's worth. Same is true for Petrobras, but not that great a difference. It's almost $101 billion in sales versus a market cap of $97 billion. They all have positive earnings, and they should have positive earnings with uh, oil trading at around $80 per barrel in terms of uh, April futures. Um, they're all making decent money right now and they should be doing pretty good. If you look at it over a picture of one year for uh, chartists who like uh, or prefer pictures to uh, uh, tables and columns and uh, rows, then we can see that if you were invested in Petrobras over the last year, despite the recent uh, pullback of around 16% that I showed you over the last month, uh, a few slides ago, you're probably sitting pretty uh, and you're quite happy with the fact that your uh, position over the last one year period is up about 40%. Uh, I have been long after I initially exited Petrobras early in 2023. I went long again shortly thereafter, built a position. So uh, for me, uh, this is in the money as well. So I'm pretty happy with my performance on Petrobras. Energy transfer has been a good performer for us over the past three and a half years or so. It's done really, really well. My cost basis on energy transfer is about $9. And uh, in addition to that, I've been buying the stock handover first without spending a single dollar because uh, I'm enrolled in a DRIP, which is a dividend reinvestment program. So every time energy transfer pays me a dividend, I buy more stock. And as a result, energy transfer is now one of my largest single equity holdings in energy. The others kind of a little bit uh, laggards here at the bottom on the right-hand side. Uh, they haven't performed too well. And then you have a fair question that you can ask me and say, why are these even in, in your portfolio at all? Why do you keep them, right? So uh, when you look at a stock like Occidental, for the past one year, it's up 2%. Uh, as I said, my cost basis is $10, but I'm going to come back to that one in a minute. In fact, I'm going to show you Occidental on the last slide. So let's look at a quick snapshot of these. I'm not going to keep you too long. Uh, Devon is a mid-cap value stock. It's a US-based company. You can buy it for about 50 bucks. It's a $30 billion company. And it has an annual dividend yield, which fluctuates because they have a, uh, a variable and fixed dividend, depending on their free cash flow that determines the variable one and the fixed one that they pay on, an, uh, on a quarterly basis. But currently, it's yielding approximately $3.31, which is equal to almost 7%. So Devon, in this particular instance, is almost like a high-yielding savings account, paying me a dividend or interest, if you'd like, of about 7% per year. My cost basis on Devon is about $49. So I'm uh, pretty much just drawing level here. Uh, if it uh, goes up a little bit more, I'll be in the money. And if it pulls back a little bit more, I'll be uh, caught somewhat short on this position. But I'm not too worried about it. I'm holding it because it's paying me this dividend of 7%, which as I said, is a high yielding savings account. Uh, down at the bottom here, you can see if Devon's sort of sitting in the middle of its 52 week range. If your timing was good and you managed to get into Devon at around 40 bucks, congratulations, well done. On the other hand, if you bought Devon sort of at the higher end of the 52 week range, sort of in the mid 50s or so, you're probably going to be okay. So it's not anything to worry about. But you can see this, uh, uh, let's call it dislocation here between Devon. It was sort of trending along with the three major indices being the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ up until about um, early October last year when it started its nosedive and it continued there. And then of late, we've had a little bit of an uptick. Devon is the one uh, specifically that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation where the uh, current spot price for natural gas is uh, less expensive than the production cost. So it's not a good position to be in. How about Enbridge? Well, it's the same as Devon. I hold Enbridge and I've had Enbridge in my um, various uh, trading accounts long for many, many years. 
uh, yielding around 7% or thereabouts based on the current price of about 35 bucks. It's also sitting right, right in the middle. Enbridge is also engaged in natural gas. You can buy it for about 35 bucks. It's a large cap value stock and it's Canadian. So it gives me another level of diversification because Devon is a US company and Enbridge is a Canadian company. You can see how Enbridge has dramatically underperformed the three major indices, which is another reason why I would add some more Enbridge, which is actually what I have been doing. So uh, in addition to buying uh, by reinvesting my dividends, I've also added to my Enbridge positions and I've done the same with Devon as well. How about energy transfer? Well, energy transfer, I have been buying hand over fist, but mainly as a result of the dividend reinvestment program. So I haven't uh, used any of my cash or allocated any of my cash to buy more energy transfer. I just keep reinvesting my dividends. And the um, compounded effect of that is that Enbridge just grows and grows and grows. A mid-cap value stock, of course, it's US as well. Uh, it's very diverse in terms of um, its um, product mix or spread. It also owns retail, which is Sunoco in the United States. $52 billion company is currently yielding more than 8% uh, on an annual basis. It's trading right at the high, which is one of the reasons why I wouldn't necessarily want to dip into my wallet and buy more energy transfer now, but I'm quite comfortable just uh, allocating my dividends to buying more stock. Enbridge, uh, Enbridge and Devon might have underperformed, but energy transfer have not has not, it's actually maintained its performance along with the major indices, except that it's been underperforming the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, of course, is tech heavy, and you have about seven stocks that, that have been driving that um, index higher, uh, as opposed to the entire NASDAQ market as a whole. Uh, you probably know which seven stocks I'm talking about. I'm talking about those mega tech stocks like Microsoft, Amazon, Google, et cetera, Meta. Petrobras, another uh, form of diversification. This is a Brazilian company, so it's an emerging markets play for me. Very volatile. It's probably going to be volatile going forward as well, uh, but it's okay. I can uh, accommodate this risk because remember, it's one of my top uh, five positions. So in terms of equal weighting, it's, uh, it's about 20% or so of these top five that I'm showing to you now. And if I add XLE into the mix, then Petrobras uh, drops to about 10% of my energy portfolio, especially if I include some smaller holdings, which are quite large as well, like Alliance Resource Limited Partners and Blackstone Minerals. Uh, high dividend yield. Um, you can't really count on the dividend here because obviously recently they cut the dividend. But if they actually uh, manage to produce a dividend yield of $2.98 in American dollars this year, that will yield approximately 20%, which is a very high dividend. Uh, Petrobras has easily outperformed the indices, except for the most recent dip, and it's still ahead of the pack, and it's sitting just to the right-hand side of its 52-week range. Now, I've covered four of these for you, and one thing I didn't talk about is right in the middle at the bottom of the screen, the short interest, right? So let me just go back for a second, because on Petrobras, it's only 1%, and on energy transfer, it's only 1%, and Enbridge is only 1%, and Devon is 2.6, so slightly higher, right? But relatively low. But now this is the last one. So let's go to Occidental Petroleum. They have added a red arrow, right? So when you have short interest on the stock, that's almost 10%, uh, just to make it an easy number, you have 886 million shares outstanding and 10% of that is 88 million. So this is not 10% at the bottom. So let's just round it and say approximately 80 million shares of Occidental is sold short in the market, meaning people are expecting Occidental to drop and maybe even drop quite significantly from where it is trading currently. Now, even at the uh, current price, $63.64, uh, even Warren Buffett is in the money, so it's pretty good in terms of where it is right now. Uh, but remember, uh, just over a year ago, Occidental was trading at about $77, and it's 52-week high at $67, so it's still a little bit shy of that. In fact, it's just sitting right of center on its 52-week range, and Oxy, like the others I showed you, uh, pulled back quite significantly and sharply as the price of the commodity decreased and uh, dislocated itself from performance versus the indices uh, from around October, November last year. It pays a really, really small dividend. So uh, you can ask the question, uh, so why, Mr. Oxy, uh, do you still have Occidental Petroleum in your portfolio? Well, the one reason is that my gain is so huge. It's a 6X, right? My, I told you at the start, my cost base is $10. So uh, when I have a 6X gain, if I exited the entire position, I'd have to pay tax on all of that. So uh, I keep a little bit of it as a hedge against uh, the other positions that I hold. So it's a long hedge for me. And then on the other hand, 
it's paying a small dividend, which is yielding currently uh, 88 cents. So, you know, it's less than a dollar uh, or 1.36% uh, based on the current stock price. The thing is, right, so if you, uh, if you look at this dividend here, which let's call it a dollar, um, it's, not, it's not a lot uh, when the stock is trading at $63. But if it's yielding about a dollar and your cost basis is $10, that's 10%. So effectively, uh, you know, I, I've got a, a dividend yield here based on my cost basis, not based on the current stock price, or almost 10%. So uh, firstly, I don't want to take the tax hit in terms of selling Occidental right now. And secondly, I'm quite happy to hold Occidental while it's paying me personally, as in me, a dividend yield of almost 10%. So Occidental is also part of my savings account, and I don't expect too much growth from that particular stock. Now, if you had to ask me, would I buy any of these right now? So uh, the answer is actually yes. So I have shared that with you because I have been uh, allocating some capital to Petrobras and Devon. Uh, Enbridge, I predominantly uh, do a dividend reinvestment program and energy transfer is the same. So I do buy them. Uh, but effectively what I'm doing is I'm not taking my dividend in cash. I'm just taking more stock. Uh, the outsized position here for me is in energy transfer, which is now the greatest single stock I hold in my energy portfolio. And um, other than that, the ones I mentioned, if I if I had to call it my top eight, I'd say um, excluding small cap uranium companies and the larger cap uranium company like Cameco, uh, my top eight would be these five plus uh, XLE, uh, Blackstone Minerals and um, Alliance Resource Limited Partners. That gives me diversification too on Blackstone Minerals. I get some real estate and royalty income on Alliance Resource Limited Partners. I get thermal coal as an addition, and coal is the future, uh, <laughs> despite what people might tell you. Uh, the uh, Southeast Asian economies, uh, China, India, et cetera, are going to be using coal hand over fist as people improve their lives in that part of the world. So uh, don't worry about what anybody else tells you. Coal is the future, and coal is not a bad place to invest right now. And in addition to that, Alliance Resource Partner pays a dividend of almost 14% and Blackstone Minerals a dividend of almost 12%. So on that happy note, this is for well, this video, Mr. Oxy signing off saying thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.